Hi, I am Jennifer Purcell, and welcome to my podcast, Living with an Invisible Learning Challenge, where we will discuss, discover, and learn more about the challenges and triumphs of those with NLD and other learning challenges. I do have a website for this podcast, and it is called livingwithnld.com. I also have a Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter account for the podcast. They are all under the same name, which is Living with NLD. I also have a YouTube channel for the podcast, which can be found by Googling the title of the podcast, which is Living with an Invisible Learning Challenge. I would like to tell you about a nonprofit that I use for my research for this podcast. It is called The NBLD Project, and I use their blog for my research. They are a nonprofit that is based in New York and is trying to get NVLD back on the DSM, and they provide many resources for people with NVLD on their website. I'll provide you with the website for them in the podcast description. All proceeds from the ads on this podcast will be donated towards the NVLD project. Please feel free to explore the other topics on the podcast, and hopefully you will learn something new from them. I hope you enjoy today's episodes. And today I am very excited to announce that BetterHelp is now sponsoring this podcast. I have had seven years of therapy, so I know it can help change your life if you not only let it, but work on the personal goals that you set with your therapist. Without a healthy mind, being truly happy and at peace is hard. The good news is therapy works. But what is therapy exactly? It's whatever you want it to be. Maybe you're not feeling motivated right now and would like some tools to help. Or maybe you're feeling insecure in relationships at work, not dealing well with stress. Whatever you need, it's time to stop being ashamed of normal human struggles and start feeling better because you deserve to be happy. And now you don't have to worry about finding an in-person therapist near you to help. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's more affordable than in-person therapy and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Join the millions of people who are seeing what online therapy is really about. It's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are the greatest asset. And special offering to listeners of Living with an Invisible Learning Challenge, you can get 10% off your first month of professional therapy at betterhelp.com slash I'll put in the link in the podcast description for you. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-E-P. Thanks again to BetterHelp for supporting, I mean, sponsoring this podcast. Also, another announcement that I have to make is I recently created another podcast called Sleepy Butterfly for people who have challenges with sleeping at night or meditating and it's geared towards people who are auditorily sensitive or and or have chronic migraines and being able to have nice relaxing nature sounds for them to fall asleep to or to meditate to and be able to be refreshed the next day or when they come out of their meditation Um, so some of the sounds are like chimes or nature sounds like water or um, rainforest and again it's called sleepy butterfly it is on spotify and also apple podcast and google podcast and it's on everywhere else where you can get podcasts as well so i hope you are able to get some benefits out of that one also i also want to mention to you that i just launched my podcast swag 
on Wednesday of this week and have a page for it on my website. And I will also send you the link to it in the podcast description. And I will also send it to you in the newsletter that I usually send on out on Fridays. I am now selling t-shirts, water bottles, and a backpack and they all have the podcast logo and title on it and the tagline. So I am looking forward to watching the sales and seeing who buys them and um, spreading the word more about my podcast. Okay, happy Friday. At least that's at least it's Friday from where I am, which is on the West Coast. And um, so a couple things I want to update you on. I should have done this a while ago, but I forgot to share with you that the person who created my new podcast logos that I did earlier this year, his name is Max Klein, and I will want to interview him about the logos in the future when we both have time to do that. But I wanted to give him credit for designing, or at least helping me design the logo for uh, learning, living with an invisible learning challenge. Sorry, I'm a little tongue tied. And Sleepy Butterfly podcasts, because they are really professional looking and really good. And I'm also having him create three new logos for me that I'm going to be doing for three other podcasts. Yes, I might be a little crazy. I'm going to have five podcasts. Ah! <laughs> um, anyways, so that's for the logos. And um, the other thing is that I also am working on turning this podcast, the one on NLB, into a book. So I'm a little busy right now, so I will be moving the support group that I have for neurodivergence to probably every other month or at least that when it works with my schedule because um, I'm kind of busy with creating three new podcasts and transcribing this one into a book. So um, please bear with me on that. Thank you. Okay, so today's episode will be an interview. Yes, I know I should have posted one last week, but I forgot to do that. So here's your interview one week later. Sorry about that to my audience and to Olivia. I had posted her, the first part of her interview a couple weeks ago, and here's her second part of the interview with me and on her life with NLB, low muscle tone, and other learning challenges that she lives with. And she is from the East East Coast. Sorry, my mind's a little scattered today. Um, so I hope you enjoy listening to the second part of Libby's interview with me. And also, side note, she is a project social ambassador for the NBLD project like I am. So that will also be talked about in the interview. All right. Enjoy. And that's the thing. It is a spectrum. Like my, uh, I'll, uh, a few months ago, because my, I'll tell you just the quickest little story of the example of that. A few um, months ago, we were talking, my family and I, um, I have an older brother, older sister, and uh, my parents as well, my mom and dad. And it was like my parents, my brother and me, we were having dinner. My um, sister lives with her husband and kids like in another town. So whatever, it was just us four. (laughs) Uh Just to set up the scene. Sorry, I'm setting up the scene. We were talking dinner and we brought up Cammy, my sister's kid with um, um, daughter with um, uh, autism. So Uh that, and I forgot what the topic was, but then it kind of got to relate over. I was like, oh yeah, like I can relate to that with the spectrum or my brother's like, don't say that. Don't tell people that. And I go, what? You don't have a, like, there's not a mild to severe. He didn't know. He's like, there's not a mild to severe case with MALD. It's not like autism on the spectrum. And my parents and I looked at him and we're like, oh no, it is. And he was like, really? 
And I was like, yeah, there it's, it's mild to severe case. And my parents were like, yeah, we got told that. And I was like, yeah. And I see that too, as well. Like talking to other people with MVLD. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's just a prime example of, you know, people think, oh, on the spectrum and then they kind of will go straight to autism, but they don't realize it's kind of different, a different spectrum of it. Right. Yeah. As a, it is a different spectrum, but it's kind of relatable. Um, do you know what uh, caused your MLB? Um, that's, a, do people know? Well, they can sometimes, sometimes they can be born with it or it's genetic or there's a okay. trauma. Uh, that's yeah. what I've heard of. Okay. I didn't realize there was different because I was born with it for sure. Mm -hmm. I, um, so that would be, yeah, because I was, so that was the, my, um, the whole, when I was like nine months old and I couldn't sit up by myself, this is how it started or like mm. how my journey to get diagnosed started. So I was nine months old and this is what, again, I, I obviously don't remember my parents do. So my mom, right. um, she said that I would sit up, but I would topple a few seconds later. And mm. then that would happen with her, my sister, my older sister or my older brother. So she brought me to like regular checkup, my doctor, my doctor said, Oh, there's pathways, which was this uh, pediatric clinic went there and they diagnosed me with low muscle tone. Then I met with physical therapists and I could walk and till I was able to walk and um, like, you know, sit by myself, uh, which was like just 10 months of that. So then came when I was a toddler, like five years old, and my parents were noticing how fast I was speaking or that I love to talk and this. So, but sometimes I would rumble like a toddler when I was like that. So they, you know, got when I think I went to a speech therapist, they said I had some like arcu articulate disorder or whatever the a okay. word is for speaking <laughs> and okay. all of that led to then um my family moved I was in a Girl Scout troop so this is kind of how the MVLD thing came about um yeah my family moved to a different town um then I went on a Girl Scout trip and a mother on the Girl Scout trip noticed some of my symptoms were similar to her son who I've never met. So I just want to make that clear. Cause I know I said earlier, never met and I never met him, but my, that mother told my mother, Hey, she might have NVLD. Mm. My parents then took me to get tested and I was diagnosed with NVLD shortly after that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that makes sense to me too, because when I was, uh, in college, and actually, I growing up, I'll backtrack a little bit. Growing up, I also had a speech therapist, so I can relate to that. Because oh, yeah. uh, my mom, my parents noticed that sometimes I had a problem with saying the TH blend or like the SH. And sometimes I still have a challenge with saying words like, I'll say shoulder or like shoulders when I meant, when I mean shoulders. <laughs> Also preface or like uh apocalypse or apocalypse like it takes me to I get you girl I I understand <laughs> <laughs> and I know what I'm trying to say and they do too mm -hmm. and like oh or I mean I say singer instead of seniors mm -hmm. the other word for elderly and mm -hmm. I'm like no I'm trying to talk about old people not right. singing <laughs> <laughs> And it's just, it makes me smile and laugh because it's like, they know what I'm trying to say, but I yeah. can't always say it right. Um, I've tried to work on saying it right because there are some people who don't know I have NLD and they're going to wonder what I'm saying. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I can get with being born with it because um when I was in college, that was when I, ha I always had a personal hunch. I was different from everybody in my family mm -hmm. and at least until high school. And, um, I, and I was homeschooled growing up. So I was in a different environment than most kids. Um, and I was comparing myself to my older brother who was neurotypical. And I was like, 
there are so much things that are easier for him than for me. I'm like, why? Um, Mm -hmm. And not until college did I, you know, kind of have the courage to say to my parents, I want to get tested for learning disability. I think I have one. Um, And they had had testing done when I was a child, but there wasn't enough to sway me one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Um, See, I feel like I got lucky. So I get what you're saying with that, because if if it wasn't for that mother at that Girl Scout trip, who knows, who knows, or my family moving. So I completely see where you're coming from. Yeah, I totally understand that. Yeah, I agree with that too. And um, after I got diagnosed and uh, like I said earlier, things clicked for me in terms of my challenges. um, I realized as I was watching and observing my dad more, I don't know if he has an OB, but I'm thinking he might because he was um, adopted and we don't know that much about his family. And Mm -hmm. like... I know because I have an oldie, it's hard for me not to see those tendencies, but sometimes I just see him struggle to communicate or um, mm-hmm. plan ahead. And I know people with an oldie have sometimes have challenges with finding the right word to say things. And um, that also we have challenges with um, executive functioning with planning. Mm-hmm. So um but he's actually really good at math. So it's like, it Oh, that's, is. that's funny. You say that my dad, when I was younger, my dad said he had some a couple, like it, he never was diagnosed and he doesn't have it. He's very sarcastic for one. So I can't think he does have that because mm-hmm. obviously um, that's something with, for me, sarcasm is something I struggle with. I don't know if everybody else with MVLD does, but um, yeah. he said like, Oh, he struggled with math. And uh, so maybe he was trying to relate or anything that but yeah I I don't know if it's genetic if anybody in my family you know growing up otherwise like the older generation had it or not um I do know that compared to me my siblings and like my cousins I'm definitely different and it's not just political stance it's more so of like um yeah it's more it's more so of like how we interact and talk and everything, but I had to actually have a whole conversation with my cousins because of that, because right after college and I came back and I was just like, uh, uh, cause I love my cousin Ryan to death, but he, um, (laughs) he like would just get under my skin with things he would say. Uh. And like, and it like, in a like, he was being so sarcastic. And that's where I was just like, you realize, like, I can't tell half of the time. So we had a conversation and he's like, oh, okay. And he's like, stop doing like teasing in that kind of way. Um, not saying I don't like being teased because anybody could tease my friends and I tease each other all the time. We joke right. all the time, but it was just like, hey, this is what I have. So if I act a certain way towards you, that's because. I'm bouncing off your energy with mine and and like mine, it has this, I have my VLT. So, uh, yeah. So it's, I totally see where you're coming from for sure with all that. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense with me with the sarcasm too, because, um, sometimes I feel, I don't feel as a burden as I much as I used to Mm -hmm. with NLB, but I did in the beginning because I was, I guess I was still learning more about it. Um, but with the sarcasm, I used to go right over my head. And because my parents listened to comedians like Stephen Colbert and Trevor Noah, um, I had to pause it and be like, I don't get how it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> and I know. <laughs> and that's right. Sorry. That's no, it's, it's okay. I, I understand. I'm like now looking back because now I get why it's funny because mm-hmm. I've taken right. the time. Yeah, that's me. Like it takes me, if I meet somebody new, it may take me one or two sarcastic jokes of theirs to understand a sarcasm versus, yeah. or even like dry sense of humor or something like that versus like, 
my friends when they're sarcastic, I'll laugh right away. Cause I, I think for, I don't know, again, there's not much research done, but for me, what I come to the conclusion is I, it's the tone of voice. So everybody has a different tone of sarcasm. Yes. So that's what I have to get used to. And it just now takes me once or twice where when I was younger, I, it would go over my head too. <laughs> And I take it so like things so seriously and people are like, why are you taking, I like, uh, I have so many stories about that too. <laughs> um, yeah, that makes sense to me. And do you know how you feel about having MLB? Um, so I, as an adult, I'm totally like, um, I've accepted it when I was a teenager growing up and also through my twenties was a different experience than teenagers. And I could get to that. Um, mm -hmm. so how I, it's, it's kind of a funny question when you say that, cause it's like, I don't want to be like, Oh, I feel great having it. And I don't, right. be, Oh, it sucks because it's, it's not either. I mean, it's, it's to me, it's like a gift and a curse. And I say that because my long-term memory is like my friends and family will look at me and be like, you remember that? And I'm like, yeah. So like in that way, it's a gift like that. And I think MVLD gave me also a gift of thinking outside the box or being very tolerant towards others. Because mm -hmm. my dad has said to me, I'm very tolerant towards others. And um, and um, and in a way too, like um, in college, I had friends uh, like who came out of the closet with their uh who were gay lesbian came out of the closet or anything like that mm -hmm. and it's not like mvlt and that is in any relation but i understood what, what it was like to keep it a secret for two years and right like, year and a half in high school and i chose to keep it a secret my parents didn't tell me or anybody else didn't tell me to keep it a secret i chose to keep it a secret in high school because I didn't want, yeah, my friends to think of something in that. And I was also in denial. I went for, <laughs> I mean, here's, here's a good example of this. I literally first couple of weeks of school, my LRC teacher, which is like it's called learning resource teacher, basically a teacher for those who have learning disabilities out of school. Mm. And she told me, she asked all my teachers to excuse my um, tardiness for two weeks so I could get used to the directions of school. Cause I also, um, with MVLD, a symptom is like not understanding directions very well and that. But two weeks in, I'm at my locker. Um, I'm the only one in the hall cause I went to the bathroom. So everybody's in class now. And my crush comes down the hall. And my crush asked me, where is my, uh, where this room is. And I knew exactly where the room was from my locker, but because with MVLD, I couldn't really explain the things in that, but my mind went to this. My mind didn't go, oh, I have LMVLD. I can't say it. And I don't want to say him. Oh, I don't want to look stupid. I don't look dumb. But I'm my, literally in my head. I don't know what, what 14 year old I was to think of this. My, 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 my brain I'm laughing. Cause I can relate. <laughs> yeah. My brain went, what better way to get to know him better than just walk him to the class? Cause I knew that way from my locker. So I was like, oh, you know what? It's just easier if I just walk you there. And he went, oh really? And I was just like, yeah. And so he goes, won't you be late? It's like, oh no, my class is like right near there. No, it wasn't. I didn't know where my class, my biology, I had biology at the time. And so I knew it was on the same floor. Yeah. <laughs> so we're walking and talking and we're like, Oh, how's school going? How's, you know, all, you know, you're like, want to say to your crush and he wants to say to you and stuff. And we go and, <laughs> and so here's the door and he goes, Oh, we're right here. He goes, Oh, well, thank you so much for like, show me the way, like all that. And he's like, what are you up to this weekend? And like, maybe like, you know, our group of friends can hang out. Cause like, that was kind of the thing wasn't like me out group. Yeah. Just text me. That's what I said. Turn around walked down the hall and went, oh, I never went from algebra to biology before. I have no idea where I'm going. So I turned one hallway. Um, so my thing in middle school that I noticed I did before I found out I had MVLD was look at the locker numbers to find my way or the room numbers on the doors to find my way. Not the locker numbers. That's actually no room numbers on the doors. Sorry. I did both, but room numbers were better in the door. So I would look at the room numbers in the doors. So I turned right. And cause 
I, just to give everybody a picture, it's the same halls with the same doors, green lockers. I think they were green. It could have been blue, but like that with like same one indoors. So there's nothing on the second floor that could tell me what was different. Yeah. Right. So I'm following room numbers. I turn right. And I'm waiting for it to go up because that was two or two. My class, my biology class was 222. So that's all I'm, I'm waiting to follow in chronological order. Well, hallways are hallways. They're in big maze. And I turn right. And it went from like 211, something like that, or 210 to like 232. And I went, what? And so I went back the other way. It was going all these different. So I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to even think about this. Nope. I'm just going to walk aimlessly around the hall. And I did. So I got to my classroom. <laughs> and so in that sense, teenager me was in so much of trying to accept it right then and there I was in so much denial and bargaining happened right after that because my biology teacher around the same time gave us a sheet of paper where we would have to answer like this 12 questions with our biology book right Uh, I could only answer three and it was define this or what definition is this that was easy when it came to like analyzing explain all that I couldn't answer it and I had a tutor I also, yeah, exactly. Huh? What, what? So I had a tutor coming the next day and I um, told my teacher, I came in with incomplete and I said to my teacher, Hey, I can give it to you tomorrow. My teacher was like, if you let her get down, I'd be, that's fine. Cause with my tutor, I would get an A, then it would be a B, you know, kind of thing. So my tutor is trying to do the best to explain it, but I'm really like, all right, not like, you know, give me the answers, but I'm like, oh yeah, I understand it. Or she'll try to, we were like, I understand it. But if I didn't, I said I did it because I did because the answer was there. So it was kind of the thing of, then I went to bargaining. Then it came what anger I think was, which yeah, I was angry at a lot of things. Like, you know, teenager wise, you know, angry that I have this, that, you know, different that, you know, it, there was, there were so many embarrassing and awkward moments. I mean, I am, blame my falling down the stairs <laughs> in the middle of a bunch of people on my first day of high school on it <laughs> and then two weeks later I tripped and fell like I'm with nobody around and I just laughed at myself because I was like of course I'm a klutz but then I realized in that moment so are so many other people without MVLD so maybe that's not what that is so I was learning and learning and I came to fully accept it when, um, and I don't want to keep going, going on with it, but I came so like year and a half later, there was also, yeah, I'm going to say this. There's also the depression part. And I, again, I could go into detail of each stage of like what happened, what I was feeling at this moment, what MVLD symptoms were the cause of that, what happened this, but came to acceptance with like a year and a half later, I, um, So I such a group of friends in high school. I was friends with this group. I like was a friends with a lot of groups, but the close group of girls I started noticing were very gossipy. Um, Very, um, they would talk about other, what? Sorry. Clickish. Yeah. Clickish. We would talk about other people um, who I knew like, 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 and just like laugh about them or like this and this. So it would kind of came to a point where I would eat lunch with them. And I realized I was eating more than I was interacting with them. Or for instance, and this is a good example too. I would, one day I came to lunch early, sat in like where one of the girls sits who I considered the queen bee. And then they all sat like right next to me. Obviously they didn't, they, they sat like, they didn't leave a space or chair between. They just sat, but they, they didn't even sit around. They just sat you know, that way. So I started noticing things were up. And then I um, was still, like I said, friends with other group of girls who, um, and it was so funny too, because my friends outside the group would tell me, hey, when you're around them, you're starting to act like, can I swear? I don't know if I can say. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. You're starting to act like a bitch, like when you're Mm. with them. And I'm like, Oh, so I'm starting to see all these things. And then they were also that group of friends, bless their hearts, like all that. We were all teenagers back then, but they, I also started noticing a couple of those girls where like would use me for my house. Cause I had a basement, like my family had a basement. So I would have parties and I would get uh. phone calls sometimes to be like, Hey, you could have a party this weekend. Right. Instead of being like, 
asking me, they would be like, Hey, so you can have a party, right. Or you're going to have, you know, so it was certain things like that, that made me, okay, I want to separate myself from them. And then I started hanging out with this other group of friends, two girls who I was hanging out with still at the time with and still very close with and I've known those girls since elementary school and so with those girls and some of the other girls that they were hanging out with I knew some middle school and then there were other girls from that same group that were from a different middle school but they all so we all started talking hanging out I'm like oh I'm going to their houses now and I'm hanging out with them and we're talking about so much more than just gossiping about other people or anything like that. And I started noticing with them, like after maybe a year of now, my focus and my attention hanging out with them, you know, I was like going out with them more. And I started noticing that certain things with the other group that they would be like, why are you acting so weird? Or why would you say that? That they started to do. And mm-hmm. I didn't want to lose them as friends because of MVLD, because of this. So I knew at some point I would have to tell them, but I was so scared too. And so I went on a um, Quario retreat, which is community representing our young adults. And, um, and so it's a uh, youth program or youth club organization at our rec center um, in our town. And I was a part of it since seventh and eighth grade till now high school. And we would go on these retreats where um, um, can't really give too much away, but pretty much you would be in groups and you would just tell each other stuff in the groups. And what the important thing about that was, you know, that like you, whatever you say in the group stays in the group, you can't say it outside in school. So I was so nervous with those. And this happened before with the girls, when I decided to tell them, um, that the retreats that I went on, I would not make up stuff, but not say anything about MVLD. I would say other things just to see if it would spread around school. And it didn't, because I've mm-hmm. also been the subject of a couple of rumors in high school. So I was, I was always, te- I became, around sophomore year, then around end of sophomore year, I started testing things out of like, who can I trust? What can I like? Cause I, now that I knew I had MVLT, I was like, okay, now I have this. So I'm going to try my focus on obviously still missing some social cues here and there, but like, um, and also my speech therapist through that time was amazing. Cause like her and I would be like, we would go over scenarios Like, I'll give you a quick example. And I know I'm trying to finish up the story right away, but like this, yeah. Um, So one example was with that other group of girls, I asked, so it was sophomore year and she was like wearing white after Labor Day. And as MBLD, you take rules seriously. Like for instance, not wearing white after Labor Day. You don't realize it's an unwritten rule or unspoken rule or really a kind of a bogus rule. Like it's Mm. not even a rule that exists. There's no law that says, you know, but that's what people say kind of thing. And, and so I said to her, but I was like, wait, but you're not supposed to like, isn't that wrong or blah, blah, blah. And I was kind of, it sounded probably to her, I was making fun of her for it. And a couple months later, I came with a green top, kind of like the one I'm wearing now. And I had a red bag I wore to school. Like a, it was kind of, it wasn't a backpack, but it was kind of like the red bag I would put my books in. And she goes, why are you wearing Christmas stuff? It's not even Christmas. So I was just like, wait, why is she now coming back at me with this? When I was seriously asking her why she was wearing pants, because I was very curious why she was wearing pants after Labor Day without knowing my mm-hmm. speech therapist then explained to me when I brought up the situation, oh, she said that because she thought she was making fun. You were making fun of her like back then. So she was trying to get back at you. And I went, oh, so I actually went up to the girl and I apologized and she apologized to me and we were fine. But it was kind of that whole thing of now I'm starting to see all different things in my high school then I probably never saw in middle school as well. So now with this choreo retreats happening um there is another organization at my school called kairos i don't know if you ever heard of that it's pretty much a spiritual retreat uh 
And so I went on that and they kind of had the same thing. You know, you kind of meet in small groups, but for this one, you kind of met with one-on-one and one like in, it was one night where you just met on one-on-one with each person. You talk for a few minutes, you say whatever you want to say to each other or something like that. And you move on and stuff. So I, my friend Kelly, um, who I'm still friends with today, she, was on this retreat with me. Nobody else in that group of girls was on this retreat with me. So I said, you know what? I just found like my opening. And I said, I'm going to tell her. And I was like, I'm shaking right now or not shaking. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about this. Cause like, I'm literally now in my 14 year old, like what I was feeling and thinking was I'm going to tell her, I'm going to tell her I'm MVLD because you can't like the, you know, it's kind of the unspoken rule again of not speaking, you know, telling whoever, and like, obviously if it was something very severe or serious, like someone was suicidal, I'm pretty sure somebody would go tell somebody, but you know, and in this way we were able confidential. Yeah. So I said, Hey, I want to be the first person you talk to. I want you to be the first person I talk to as well. So she's like, all right, so here we are. We're in this big room where people are just meeting like in enough space where it's just enough space for the two of you to talk and nobody else can hear um what your conversation is so I said I'm like sitting down and I'm sh- like I'm li- literally shaking and I'm like um there's something I've been wanting to tell you this because a couple weeks ago and this is what happened um with her and I a couple weeks ago at Alex's house or guy friend's house you said um Olivia, you're weird. Like she just flat out in front of everybody just went, Olivia, you're weird. Or you're so weird or something. It was like something I did or said, mm-hmm. and she said it in a loving kind of way. Olivia, you're weird, but it shut everybody up in the basement. Like who was around us and all looked at her and I looked at her and she goes, Oh no, 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 no. I mean the good kind of weird, not the bad kind of weird. I'm, you know, the bad thing. so I was like, all right. She brought that to my attention that, you know, whatever, there's certain things I'm saying or doing that made my friends be like what is going on you know like what's up so I ended up being like she's gotta be the one like and now that I have this opportunity with Kairos I'm like I just gotta tell her she's gotta be the one first one to tell her so I was like shaking now in her and I in this room and I was like look like I know what you said about that but the reason why I could come off weird sometimes is I have MVLD it's called nonverbal learning disability and here, and you know, the, the definition starts, to, it's easier to just tell you my symptoms. So I told her my symptoms, everything like that. And so I was like, and I just wanted to tell you because I know sometimes I do this and sometimes I do that, but that's the reason why. And I'm, I'm like sort of thinking, I have no idea at this moment, which way it's going to go. Is she going to laugh? Is she going to, you know, that? I'm right. I'm so to, she just opens her arms and gives me a hug. And I just like, I think all the weight I carried because of MVLD lifted out of my shoulders when all that, and after her went back after that retreat, back to my hometown, told all my girlfriends. And this is the craziest thing. The two girls that I told you a little bit ago that like, I've been friends with elementary school and stuff. They were the most important ones because they were the ones I knew the longest. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I got to tell them that I want to tell them when nobody else is around. So I was like, Hey, can we meet up? And we, you know, high school, you got clubs, you got activities, you know, and on the weekends we're with our group of friends. I just wanted to meet up with the two of them. So my friend, um, is either Lauren and Priori. Those are the two girls I've talked that they were like, well, um, they said, no, why don't we just do a three week call? Cause they knew what they, I had, I was like, I have something important. I need to tell you guys. So they knew something was up and they like, and so we had through the call and I was just like, can we just meet? I need to meet and tell you in person. I went and they were like, no, if it's something so serious, tell us right now over the phone. So I was like, I have MVLD or nonverbal anxiety. And one of them goes, oh. And today I am very excited to announce that BetterHelp is now sponsoring this podcast. I have had seven years of therapy, so I know it can help change your life if you not only let it, but work on the personal goals that you set with your therapist. Without a healthy mind, 
being truly happy and at peace is hard. The good news is therapy works. But what is therapy exactly? It's whatever you want it to be. Maybe you're not feeling motivated right now and would like some tools to help. Or maybe you're feeling insecure in relationships at work, not dealing well with stress. Whatever you need, it's time to stop being ashamed of normal human struggles and start feeling better because you deserve to be happy. And now you don't have to worry about finding an in-person therapist near you to help. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's more affordable than in-person therapy and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Join the millions of people who are seeing what online therapy is really about. It's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are the greatest asset. And special offering to listeners of Living with an Invisible Learning Challenge. You can get 10% off your first month of professional therapy at betterhelp.com slash I'll put in the link in the podcast description for you. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-E-P. Thanks again to BetterHelp for supporting, I mean, sponsoring this podcast. Also, another announcement that I have to make is I recently created another podcast called Sleepy Butterfly for people who have challenges with sleeping at night or meditating and it's geared towards people who are auditorily sensitive or and or have chronic migraines and being able to have nice relaxing nature sounds for them to fall asleep to or to meditate to and be able to be refreshed the next day or when they come out of their meditation um so some of the sounds are like chimes or nature sounds like water or um, rainforest and again it's called sleepy butterfly it is on spotify and also apple podcast and google podcast and it's on everywhere else where you can get podcasts as well so i hope you are able to get some benefits out of that one also As I wrap up, there are some things I would like to share with you. I do have a website for this podcast. It is called livingwithnld.com. I also have a Facebook and Instagram page for this podcast. It is called Living with NLD. I will include the links for those in the description. In conclusion, I would like to hear from my audience. If you know individuals with NLD that I could interview for this podcast, please email me at livingwithnld at gmail.com. What are you interested in learning about NLD? I know I'm not an expert, but I do know I have the living experience of having it. I would like you to practice journaling about your gifts and differences. Also see if there's a way that you can make that difference become easier for you to do than it originally was. Thank you for listening today, and please go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to it. Thank you. Bye.